Hi, uh, my name is Darwin Laurier and I've been at the college uh, since 1972. I took my first position in counseling in 1968 in St. Joe, Missouri and started working at uh, Methodist Hospital with doctors and just found uh, them frankly to be a peculiar, interesting lot of people and have worked with doctors since 1968. In my role here as a pre-med advisor, I just wanted to give you an overview of what's going to be important as you take that journey and I want you to enjoy the journey into medicine. Uh, medical schools throughout the country, 145 medical schools, at the end of the day are going to look at BCPM, biology, chemistry, physics, math, in your grade point. So they're going to analyze a grade point from two standpoints, arts and science grade point and BCPM, biology, chemistry, physics, math. They're going to look at your MCAT scores, that's the medical college admissions test, there's 65 questions on the verbal reasoning. You have 85 minutes. 77 questions on both physical and biology portions. You have 100 minutes. So those 219 questions scored at a 70th percentile are going to make you an interviewed candidate. And then the third category is going to be exposure to healthcare delivery. So if I could write a scenario for you about healthcare delivery exposure, it would be four hours once a month in an emergency room if you did that for four years, that's 192 hours of volunteer experience. At the end of the day, medicine is service, so you cannot go into a medical school interview and say, I really want to help people without any proof of altruism. You, you want to be able to serve. On spring break, you could go to Honduras, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, uh, and do a medical relief mission. You could go to Venezuela. There are some uh, places on planet Earth anymore because of uh, terrorism that we, don't, we do not want our students to travel. But there's a lot of things you can do. On our website, we list pages and pages of places where you can go help the less fortunate, needy people. You have to be able to demonstrate that you've helped and served people uh, to, to, be into, to, to get into medical school. It has to be something that you can validate. So it is a marathon journey. And I run road races and I win medals in my age group as an old, fat, 60-year-old man. And so I often think of students when I'm running because some days uphill, some days downhill. And that's what medical school is like. That's life. And you have to persist and be dedicated and focused and just sustain your energy day to day, day to day. It's four years undergraduate. 16 hours a semester would be 32 hours a year times four would be 128 hours, your undergraduate degree, and then medical school is four years, and then your residency will be at least four years. Some of them are much longer. Uh, primary care is a year shorter. Surgeries, plastic surgery, seven years. Neurology is eight years. So you could be 18 today and starting medical school or starting that journey and never have earned a cent until you're 30 years of age. That takes tremendous dedication and focus. When you uh, apply to medical school, it's absolutely critical, the timing of that. You can apply to KCUMB in Kansas City with Phil Byrne and uh, Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences or at the University of Kansas. And the application, dead, uh, the application deadlines are June 1st through October 15th. If you apply early, you're considered strong. If you apply late, you're considered weak or a tardy applicant. You don't want to do that. So if you apply June 1st, you're considered strong. Then you would be interviewed in September. And in the interview, the first question obviously is going to be, so how do you know you want to be a doctor? And you will have clarified that with two or 300 hours of exposure to emergency room doctors, volunteering in pediatrics, at Children's Mercy, at Overland Park Regional, at Shawnee Mission, Olathe, someplace you will have spent some time with uh, an ER doc or something that you're interested in. You have to be able to identify how I want to be a doctor. Then you have to be aware that when medical school starts, what kind of students are they looking for? There's about 3,500 students that apply to KCUMB and there are 250 admitted. University of Kansas has 1,500 applicants, 175 admitted. So they are looking for three, five and above students, the very best of the very best. And so you, you will just have to be a very stellar student, outstanding student, and when they say, what are your concerns for this fall in medical school, you will say three concerns, the quantity of the material, the volumes of the material, and the, and the quality of the class.
and what are your goals for this fall at either medical school? I have four goals. Go to class, study, eat, and sleep. I don't have cable. I won't have time to watch cable. I'm going to be in medical school. It takes that kind of dedication and focus. It is pretty um, irrelevant to go to a medical school admissions office and say, I really want to be a doctor with a 2-1 grade point. No, you don't. Because you knew going into this that you had to have at least a 3-5. And while I recognize that if you're a 4-0 student and have 100% on the MCAT, that does not mean that you will be a good doctor. Good doctors, the way to answer that question in a medical school interview when you're asked, what is a good doctor? There's one simple pr profound answer and it's always been the same answer. Good doctors want to do one thing. They want to learn and grow every day after they're board certified so that they can be better doctors to take care of the best care of patients as possible. It's not about specialty, it's not about money, it's about being the very best you can be, the, the best educated you can be. So you're starting a journey when you start medicine about lifelong education. In Kansas, you have to have 150 hours every five years of continuing education courses to keep your board certification. So you'll be going to school, going to school the rest of your life, and yet there is nothing. I've been next to doctors where patients are well, where they've pronounced them well, and there is nothing that produces satisfaction like saving a child with a, th a three-year-old child with a brain tumor. And there is nothing like telling uh, the same family, on the other hand, that they can't save the child. And you can just go from the top to the bottom almost overnight. And you know, while your grades and your MCATs will get you into medical school, nothing will sustain you except your passion and your focus and your dedication and knowing in your heart that you want to do this. Kurt Gowdy, my hero, died a few weeks ago, broadcast for the Yankees in 1949. And Kurt Gowdy started broadcasting football games in Cheyenne, Wyoming off a soapbox in the 1940s, in the early 40s when I was born, got a ma minor break and went to Moore, Oklahoma and announced major minor league games, baseball games. The Yankees called him in 1949 and asked him to announce the Yankees games. And sometimes he murdered names, but Kurt Gowdy had it right. He said at the end of his journey on this planet, there is no amount of money that will take care of your dread to the drive of work on Monday morning to a job you hate. So find something you absolutely love. It can't be because your father's a doctor, your mother's a doctor, or somebody else wants to do that. That's called external motivation. You have to do it because you have a passion and a love for it. Dr. Gary Morsh with Heart to Heart said to Mother Teresa one day in India, are there great things we can do? And Mother Teresa responded, there are no great things you can do, Gary. You can only do small things with great love. That's at the end of the day, that's the bottom line. Why do we do what we do? To, to make big money and to live in a, in, in a big home and drive a big car? No, it's to serve mankind. It's to have a life of meaning and purpose and to make a difference. And to that end, we want you to come to the counseling center. We want you to talk to the counselors about your journey, about pre-medicine, about how to be a strong candidate. Medical school starts at each program with 24 weeks of biochemistry. The first three weeks of biochemistry is all genetics. Is biochemistry and genetics required for medical school? No, don't ever meet the minimum requirements for medical school. Always exceed the minimum requirements. Take embryology, immunology, biochemistry, genetics at a minimum and do your very, very best. Always show the faculty at those respective schools that I didn't meet the minimum requirements. I want to exceed them. I really want to do this. And when they ask you at the end of the interview, at the end of the day at either school, there's a hallway full of people out here to be admitted today. Why should you be one of them? You very, uh, you, you, you clear your throat perhaps, you square your shoulders, you look people right in the eye and say, well, I know you will interview people that have higher MCATs and higher GPAs, but you're not going to interview or admit anyone that will outwork me. I have a passion to be a doctor. I'm willing to make the sacrifices and I will have to make many of them that are required of me to be a physician but that's what I want to do with my life is to be a physician and to have a sense of meaning and purpose and make a difference in people's lives.